Well, I think the trouble with string theory is that there isn't any connection with observations. As as I'm probably taking too strong a view here, but uh, the mathematics, I mean, it's largely driven by the mathematics as far as I know, which is in itself is not an objection as far as I'm concerned. A lot of what I do is driven by the math. But the trouble with string theory is it's supposed to be a theory of the way the world operates. And if the number of dimensions of space is just wrong, I can't take it seriously. British mathematician and philosopher Sir Roger Penrose, along with American theoretical physicist Mikio Kaku, are significant figures in the scientific community. Penrose is renowned for his studies on black holes, while Kaku is well known for his string theory. Interestingly, Sir Roger Penrose strongly opposes Michio Kaku's string theory. Dark matter plays a crucial role in explaining certain phenomena in the universe. However, Penrose suggests that dark matter might not actually exist. So, why does Penrose reject Mikio Kaku's string theory? And why does he assert the non-existence of dark matter? Let's dive in to find out. String theory is a theoretical framework in physics that seeks to provide a unified description of the fundamental forces and particles in the universe. At its core, string theory suggests that the basic building blocks of the universe are not point-like particles, as described by traditional particle physics, but rather tiny, vibrating strings. These strings can oscillate at different frequencies, giving rise to different types of particles and interactions. The concept of string theory originated in the late 20th century as physicists attempted to reconcile two seemingly incompatible theories. General relativity, which describes gravity as a curvature of space-time on cosmic scales, and quantum mechanics, which deals with the behavior of matter and energy on subatomic scales. String theory emerged as a potential solution by proposing that the fundamental constituents of reality are not zero-dimensional points, but rather one-dimensional strings that vibrate in a multi-dimensional space. In string theory, the universe is described as having more than the familiar three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. The theory requires extra dimensions, typically six or seven additional dimensions, to accommodate the various vibrational modes of the strings. These extra dimensions, often compactified or curled up, are not directly observable at our macroscopic scale and are thought to be responsible for shaping the properties of particles and forces. The key feature of string theory is its ability to naturally incorporate gravity into the framework. Unlike other quantum field theories, where gravity is often treated as an external force that acts on particles, String theory inherently includes the gravitational force within its equations. This is a significant departure from previous attempts to combine quantum mechanics and gravity. String theory also introduces the notion of different string vibrational modes corresponding to different particle types. For example, the various particles in the standard model of particle physics, such as quarks, electrons, and photons, can be understood as different vibrational states of fundamental strings. This provides a potential explanation for the diverse spectrum of particles observed in particle accelerators. There are several different versions of string theory, including type I, type IIA, type IIB, heterotic SO32, and heterotic E8XE8. These versions arise from different mathematical formulations of the theory each having its unique characteristics and predictions. Interestingly, these different versions are believed to be related through a web of dualities, suggesting that they are different descriptions of the same underlying theory. Now let's discuss why Roger Penrose rejects the string theory. Roger Penrose is a renowned theoretical physicist and mathematician. He is notable for his significant contributions to various areas of physics, including general relativity, cosmology, and the study of black holes. While Penrose has made groundbreaking advancements in these fields, he has been critical of string theory and has articulated several reasons for his skepticism. His rejection of string theory stems from both conceptual and empirical concerns, reflecting his distinctive approach to understanding the fundamental nature of the universe. One of the central criticisms Penrose has expressed about string theory is related to its lack of predictive power and empirical testability. In his view, 
A fundamental theory of physics should not only be mathematically elegant and internally consistent, but should also make testable predictions that can be verified or falsified through experiments or observations. String theory, despite its mathematical beauty and potential for unification, has yet to produce predictions that can be directly tested using current or foreseeable experimental techniques. Penrose has pointed out that string theory allows for a vast landscape of possible solutions and scenarios, making it difficult to identify a unique prediction that sets it apart from other theories. This lack of specificity diminishes the theory's scientific value in Penrose's eyes, as it hinders its ability to make concrete predictions about the behavior of particles or the outcomes of experiments. In contrast, Penrose's own work, such as his development of the Penrose diagram, and his proposal for the cosmic microwave background radiation as evidence for the Big Bang has been rooted in making testable predictions and providing observable consequences for his theories. Another aspect of Penrose's skepticism towards string theory is its departure from his preferred approach to understanding the fundamental nature of spacetime and geometry. Penrose has long been an advocate of the concept of twister theory an alternative approach to describing space and time that he developed. Twister theory seeks to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics by focusing on the geometric properties of spacetime and the relationships between light rays and null geodesics. In Penrose's view, string theory places too much emphasis on particle-like entities and their vibrations, potentially neglecting the deeper geometric structure of spacetime. He has argued that a more geometric approach, like twister theory, could lead to a more profound understanding of the fundamental nature of the universe. This philosophical difference in perspective has contributed to Penrose's reluctance to fully embrace string theory as a viable framework for unification. Additionally, Penrose has expressed concerns about the level of complexity and mathematical sophistication that string theory demands. While he acknowledges the mathematical beauty and elegance of the theory, he has questioned whether its intricate formalism is indicative of deeper physical truths or if it might be an artifact of the mathematical framework itself. Penrose's own work has often focused on developing intuitive and geometrically motivated concepts, and he has raised questions about whether the complexity of string theory may hinder a clear physical interpretation. Furthermore, Penrose's rejection of string theory can be understood in the context of his broader approach to theoretical physics. He has a history of challenging prevailing paradigms and seeking unconventional solutions to fundamental problems. His work on the nature of consciousness, for example, has also faced skepticism from some quarters of the scientific community due to its departure from mainstream cognitive science. Now you might be thinking about what theory Roger Penrose presents as an alternative to the string theory. Roger Penrose's notable alternative to string theory is his proposal of conformal cyclic cosmology, CCC, a unique and thought-provoking approach to understanding the nature of the universe that diverges from the mainstream views embraced by string theory. Conformal cyclic cosmology, CCC, is a speculative cosmological model that Penrose introduced as an alternative to the more widely accepted inflationary Big Bang theory and as a response to the ultimate fate of our universe. CCC builds upon Penrose's previous work, such as his contributions to black hole physics, twister theory, and his investigations into the nature of space-time singularities. At the heart of CCC is the notion of conformal geometry, which involves a mathematical transformation that preserves angles but changes distances. In CCC, Penrose suggests that the universe undergoes an infinite series of cycles, with each cycle consisting of an aeon. During an aeon, the universe undergoes a phase of expansion followed by contraction. However, crucially, Penrose introduces a novel twist to the concept of the Big Bang and cosmic evolution. In CCC, Penrose proposes that as the universe approaches the end of a contraction phase, space-time geometry becomes conformally related to that of a subsequent aeon's initial state. This means that the distant future of one aeon is connected in a conformal manner to the distant past of the next aeon. 
This connection ensures that information and structures from one aeon are preserved and carried over to subsequent aeons. One of the intriguing consequences of this cyclical conformal geometry is that the notion of an ultimate big crunch singularity is avoided. In traditional cosmological models, the universe's expansion is thought to be driven by a period of inflation followed by an eventual slowing down and a potential big crunch singularity. In CCC, the universe's evolution does not lead to a singular point. Rather, it smoothly transitions from one aeon to the next, maintaining its geometry and information. Now let's discuss what dark matter is and why Roger Penrose believes that dark matter doesn't exist. Dark matter is a theoretical form of matter that is thought to make up a significant portion of the universe's mass, yet it does not emit, absorb, or interact with electromagnetic radiation like ordinary matter. Its existence is inferred from its gravitational effects on visible matter, such as galaxies and galaxy clusters, which exhibit behaviors that cannot be explained by the presence of only the observable matter. While dark matter has been widely accepted by the scientific community as a way to explain these gravitational anomalies, there are alternative viewpoints, and one notable skeptic is Roger Penrose. Roger Penrose's skepticism about the existence of dark matter is rooted in his alternative theory, conformal cyclic cosmology. CCC, Penrose's stance against dark matter is not based on denying the presence of unseen mass, but rather on proposing an alternative explanation for the observed phenomena that dark matter is typically invoked to explain. Penrose's skepticism is multifaceted, and it's essential to understand his arguments in context. One key aspect of Penrose's position is his proposal that certain gravitational anomalies attributed to dark matter, particularly in galaxies, can be explained by his theory of CCC. In CCC, Penrose suggests that the observed gravitational effects could be a result of the cumulative influence of gravitational radiation from distant, massive objects over cosmic time scales. This gravitational radiation, he argues, could create the appearance of extra mass without the need for non-interacting dark matter particles. So this seems enough for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.